supposed to be good to make it into two, but I'm not very good at doing twos. <laughs> so I'm going to do it all at once. But this is a, a good message. It's a little different in the way that I'm going to do it. Um, but there's a lot of pieces to it. So uh, is there anybody that would like to read? Okay, on the back side, Acts 11, 1 through 17. Anybody want to read? Okay. Um, Tina's going to read. And did you want to read any? Okay. Does anybody else want to read? Okay. Tina, when it comes time to Acts 11, read what you want and then I'll finish it off. Okay. We're going to do things a little bit different. All right. If you turn to the front page, I want to go over things. I, I put on your some bullet points and I want to go over them with you real quick like. Cornelius vision. That's the wrong word. It should be manifestation. Because an angel appeared to him. It wasn't a vision. He opened his eyes and there was an angel in front of him. No. And he told him that all his prayers and alms had come up to God. Some of you might be in that point. You have done things that God, you know God wants you to do. Your prayers, your alms, what's alms? Monetary donations. Money. Money donations. Of what he had been given away to people, not just to the church, but to, because uh, he couldn't go to church, by the way. Why not? He was a Gentile. Only mean? Jews, only Jews could go. We were excluded. Oh, you yep. were excluded. I was excluded. They didn't allow Irishmen. No. <laughs> they, they were prejudiced back then. Yeah, well, it, well, it was that one. President got press, president. Prejudice. It wasn't prejudices, but it was the fact that God told them to isolate themselves. But God's plan was always to include the Gentiles, the non-believers. And he says that in his word, that when the Messiah come, he would bring all in. But they had a hard time accepting it. What do we do? Change? Do we accept change very well? No. 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 But uh, the reason for that, God didn't want to get caught up in the pagan stuff. There was a lot of pagan stuff going on. And he didn't want to get caught up in it. The reason why he told him to separate. But when Jesus comes, he brings the victory for that. All right, so Cornelius' vision, his, his prayers in his arms. God knows every prayer you pray. And don't give up. When you least expect it, the answer to your prayer is coming. You got it? And so his prayers and his alms had come up before God. And God said, I want you to send men to Joppa for Peter. And he will come and he will tell you what to do to be saved. All right? That had not happened before. And so uh, Cornelius does that. He calls his number one guy that you can depend on. He says, go to Joppa, take a couple of men with you. And so, because, by the way, Cornelius was a commander in the Roman army. All right. What's that? Okay. And so, he sent him to, to Joppa for Peter. And while he's sending the people, people to Joppa for Peter, Peter has a vision. Remember, Jews didn't have anything to do with Gentiles. They, they didn't go have anything to do with Irishmen. They didn't have anything to do with you, Malcolm, either, did they? <laughs> and or with Shalar, with any of us. Okay? And so he he's fasting and praying, and he says, I'm getting weak. Won't you? make something for me to eat. 
And while they were trying to make something through, he passed out. And he had a vision. Now this one is a true vision because he passed out. So yeah, he passed out and he has a vision. And what's the vision about? Food. <laughs> and so this sheep from heaven comes down and there's shrimp there's a uh, pig, swine. Yeah. Uh, there's a uh, pizza, rabbit. Pizza. No, but there's cheeseburgers. Rabbit. Really? Okay. A lot of people who make a big deal about pork being unclean. Will eat what? Lobster and shrimp and cheeseburgers, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's unclean too. And so the voice comes from heaven, slay and eat. And even though Peter is hungry, he says, no, I've never ate any of these things. I'm not going to do it. And so, whose side are you on? <laughs> well, I don't know whose side you're on. And so the vision happens a second time. He, he, the vision comes a second time. And God says to him, and shows him all these animals, and says, rise, slay and eat. And Peter says, not so. I've never eaten any of these things because they're unclean. It happened to him twelve. And while he came out of the vision, there was a knocking on the door. You're missing the whole point. And they're knocking on the door. And Cornelius men come and they tell about the angel. And the voice tells Peter, it said, don't ask any questions, just go with them. Well, what happens if you start asking questions? You can, you can talk yourself out of it. If God tells you to do something and you knew God tell you to do it, do it. Uh -huh. Alright. So they, they wait till the next day and then Peter with a couple more guys come with him because you know, he can't be trusted on this because he's going to, to go to um, a Gentile's house and they have to watch him make sure he doesn't need any bacon. And that's what you want him. No bacon, right? You're missing the whole point. Because the Gentiles are the unclean. And so Peter goes to the Gentiles and he goes inside the house. Jews don't go to Gentiles' houses. Yeah. But I did get to go to a Gentile house once. I mean, a Jewish house. Uh, and have Passover. Um, uh, consider that a high honor. And then Peter preaches to Cornelius and his family. He tells them about Jesus and how through Jesus they can have salvation of sin. And he makes this one comment right there on your lesson. Acts 10.34 Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality. What does that mean, Shamar? Oh, that, but that means non-discriminatory, non-racist, non-prejudicial practice. Yeah. Peter began to realize what the whole thing was all about. You know, he thought it was something else. But, well, all of a sudden it begins to realize that it's about God cares for everyone. And so he says, in truth I perceive that God shows no partiality. Now, that, that's what Martin Luther said, right? We don't make any differences about people. And then, when he really says that, the Holy Spirit takes over and they have a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, like on the day of Pentecost. And the Gentiles started speaking in tongues. Cornelius and his household started speaking in tongues. And these Jews that were there 
on the day of Pentecost when that happened to them, they begin to realize it. You mean God's going to give the Holy Spirit to these Gentiles like He gave it to us? Because why would God do that? He shows no partiality. He shows no partiality. They do what Jesus do or Jesus was a Jew. But God's plan was always to include us. But the message had to stay pure. It couldn't be contaminated with people who do weird things. And there were some weird things that happened in the pagan religion. There, I, I don't want to get into it. But there were some weird things they did. And oh, God wanted did to keep weird. that away from them. And so they had a pure religion, but they didn't realize it was not just for them. It was for the whole world. When Jesus came, his blood opened the door for everybody. And that's, that was always God's plan from the beginning. It was always for everybody to be included. In Acts 10, 44 through 46, and while Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell on those who heard the word. And those of the circumcised, the Jews, who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, other people will know it. Other people don't know you have the Holy Spirit. You probably don't have enough of it. You have just a little taste. You need to get more. And that's what we're waiting for. We want more. We want a greater move of the Holy Spirit. We've had a few tastes from time to time. But we want more. All right. And then Peter was asked to... After all that, he got called in to Jerusalem. We heard that you went into the house of a Gentile and you were eating pork and beans. Pork and beans. Hey, no, I like pork and beans. I like pork and beans. Oh, okay. Sure. He was eating cheeseburgers. <laughs> well, he's eating cheeseburgers. I'll take that out. Cheeseburgers. That was wrong, too. Yeah, that's unkosher. A lot of people don't realize that. Okay. And so now let's talk and read it. Okay, Tina, you want to start me off? Now the apostles, apostles and the brethren, brethren, who were in Jerusalem, or Judah, heard the Gentiles had also received the word of God, and when and when Peter came up to the Jerusalem, those of the Circumcision. Circumcision continue, continued with him, continued with him, saying, You went to the un, uncircumcised. uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter explained to them in order from the beginning, saying, I was in the city of Joppa. Praying and in a trade place, I saw a vision and object when I was when I it it instantly sorry it instantly and I saw four footed animal at the earth wild beast creeping thing and bird of the air and I heard a voice say to me rise Peter kill and eat but I said no, not so 
explored for not coming of unclean head at any time entered my mouth. Okay, okay. the bird's not what? Okay. Okay. What God has cleansed, you must not call kind. Now this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was coming, then sent to me from Caesarea. Then the Spirit told me to go with them, doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen an angel in his house, who said to him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. Who will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved? And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. And upon us at the beginning, then I remember the word of the Lord, how he said, John and he baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the holy water. If therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us, when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand them? See, Peter had to explain himself because to the Jews this was very serious that he went and he went into Cornelius' house and he had some bacon and some pork and beans and some shrimp and uh, cheeseburgers. That was just not kosher. They could not eat that. But Peter went into the house uh, and um, to, even if he didn't have bacon, if he had something cooked on the stove where the bacon was, would it have bacon on it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And so everything, everything in that house is not kosher to eat. But the whole thing of it is, God it references people. There are not people that God doesn't want to be saved. He wants every one of us to be saved. Mm -hmm. And the gospel, I like to say, the, the gospel came to the Christians because Peter liked pork. That's what I really think. I really believe that. He said, I need to go preach to those Gentiles. I might get some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was a, but the whole thing was that God says what he has blessed do not call common or unclean. Is a pig unclean? Yes. From the Bible standpoint? That no. That's correct. Yes. Is, is a shrimp unclean? Yes. From the Bible standpoint, it is. Mm -hmm. All right. What did Paul say, by the way, in 1 Timothy? I love bacon. No. Uh -huh. He said, whatever is blessed is okay to eat. For a Christian... Everything is unclean. Every food you can think of, anything you think of, is unclean. For a Christian, everything's unclean. So you're supposed to start to death, right? No. No. What are you supposed to do? Eat it. No. No. Well, that's a, a, uh, All right. Jeff well, that gets the gold star today. Right. You're supposed to bless your food. That's the reason why we bless our food before we eat it. Because whenever it's blessed, it's okay to eat. It's not okay. I don't care what it is. And to the Christian, that's the way it is. We're supposed to be blessing our food. And you need to do that if you're not doing it. Okay. But the big thing was, these were people that are not supposed to be saved. Because at that point, only Jews were saved. Only Jews were believing in Jesus, except for the Ethiopian eunuch. And they kind of accepted that. That was the black man. They accepted the Ethiopian eunuch. Yeah, he was a slave. What? He was a slave, so. 
No, well, the Ethiopian eunuch was in charge of the treasury of the queen. He was not a, uh, he was a high end authority. I know. What's that? Were all the Ethiopians that he preached to when they came? What? Did he preach to other Ethiopians when they were yes. saved? What it was when the uh, when uh, the Queen of Ethiopia came to Solomon, um, she accepted Solomon's what they taught in Jerusalem, and when she went back to Ethiopia, she introduced Judaism. So the Ethiopians have always had. Uh, um, the, the Old Testament and um, the Ethiopians intermarried with Jews at that time also, but they were accepted because of King Solomon. And uh, the Ethiopian eunuch had went to Jerusalem for the Holy Days. They knew about the Holy Days. And he was reading about Isaiah being as a lamb to the slaughter. Um, and that has significance because he was a eunuch. And so he had been castrated. Mm -hmm. So he it was something he identified with. He was like a lamb to the slaughter. <clears throat> and uh, he couldn't say anything about it. And um, he couldn't have any children. Right. And that, that upset, upset him. And so he was reading that and Philip, led by the Holy Spirit, said, hey, do you understand what you're saying? And he said, no. So Philip went up to the chariot on the top of the cam camel, big uh, cur uh, curtain thing over on the top of it. And they talked about it. And then they got down the road. And the eunuch said, is there any reason I can't be baptized? And Philip said, no. He said, if you believe in Jesus, there's no reason why you can't be baptized. He said, okay. So they got out of the chariot, they got off the camel, and they, uh, Philip, baptized the eunuch, and then the eunuch came up, and Philip disappeared. He was translated to another location. Yeah. But the Ethiopian eunuch, at that time, went to Ethiopia and started the Coptic Church. And so in Ethiopia, they had Judaism and the Coptic Church until the communists took over. Right. You didn't know that, did you? Mm. I did. I didn't. Uh, but the whole thing was in verse 15. As he began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. As upon us at the beginning. So the same manifestation of the day of Pentecost had happened in this Gentile house. And that was the whole big point of it all. And Philip, uh, Peter said to these people that questioned him, you're not a Jew because you did that. You had bacon. You're not a Jew. And he said, how could I refuse it if the Holy Spirit had blessed him? Mm -hmm. And they spoke in tongues like we did. The whole thing of it is, I want you to grab a hold of the fact that the Holy Spirit was the seal that said these people were saved. Mm. Although we don't believe that that's you're saved before you that I, I might, might not should have said it quite that way, but it was a symbol on on the believers that they truly were saved because they had accepted the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit they they spoke in new tongues. There was a manifestation that took place. And we come up here to the altar. I don't know if you know it, but we're asking for God to manifest Himself upon us. I don't know how it's going to be, 
but I am believing God for a 100% manifestation. And it's going to be a difference like you never have seen before. God wants to radically change your life. How many are interested in being radically changed? All right. We need to be radically changed. We need to move with the Holy Spirit that is so dramatic and so different that it is a radical change in our life. And that's what we look for. That's what I pray for. That's why we say what? What the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit moving, you know, without it, what are, what are we? We need that. Mm -hmm. We need that. Because when that happens, there will be a drastic change. There will be a drastic change when that happens. That's why I'm pushing for it. Because all that we're doing, we need this next push into something greater. Would you like to be pushed into something greater? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Would you like to be pushed into a situation where healings become automatic? Poof! Now you pray and you pray and you pray and then you get a little touch. You pray and you pray a little bit more and you get a little better. I can actually say the healing from the prayers. What? I can actually say the God has the healing from the prayers because it's been three years. Oh, okay. All right, that, that is an answer to prayer. But God is willing to go one step past that and spontaneous healings break out among us and miracle type healings, not healing from the common cold. I'm talking about a miracle where your body lines up in a different way. Mm. That's what we need, isn't it? Mm -hmm. okay. What's that? I didn't know the communists are so evil. <laughs> no, when you said it about Ethiopia, Communist and they had a famine and all that back in the 80s. Yeah. And thanks to that communism, uh, that usually follows communism. Yeah, because uh, the Russians had one too. Yeah, and that was because the way they treated the farmers. Guess what we're doing to the farmers right now in America? We're mistreating the farmers now, aren't we? The Amish man, remember the story of the Amish man? Got fined $250,000 for using uh, cow manure as fertilizer. Oh, it's a natural fertilizer. Also. Yeah. I, I thought that's what we wanted. Let it set. And then there, uh, there's a lady, an elderly lady that had a garden for herself. She wasn't selling anything. Thanks anyway. She was, just had a garden that she was growing things. And the federal government came in and destroyed her crop. Huh. Her garden. Sure. There, are, there is a war on farms in America and Holland and different places. This is not, famine is the outcome of it. Hey Dave. Yes sir. I love how these people say they, they care about the environment, but yet they'll complain about someone using cow manure as fertilizer. Yeah, and by law, they were not allowed to question it, not unless there was a complaint, and there were no complaints. Hmm. But see, you know, when you use manure, it can get very smelly. And sometimes you get people complain about it because it's smelly. True. They had no complaints, so they had no right to be there. But I don't know what the outcome of it. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Compost. You let it sit there and compost. It doesn't. Okay. Smell anymore. I know. Right. Okay. If it compost, it can't be regarded. I know because I, I, I grew up on a farm. Okay, so. real quickly, I'm going to be for you. I used to clean it off. As we, we come to a close, this is off the subject, but we're talking about compost, cow manure, mm -hmm. and, um, and 
Aggies, uh, Texas A&M University in Texas. They have once a year this um, uh, cow manure chip throwing thing. <laughs> oh yeah, they do. But if it's all dried up, it's not doing right. all that. And so they <coughs> they have the, they I don't know if they still do it, but it used to be uh, that they would have this chip throwing thing where they would throw it like a, a frisbee. They would throw it like a frisbee. And they would have a contest and we could throw it feathers and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah, thank you. That's enough. Yeah. Okay.